Is it better? OK, great. So the first thing that we will be talking about is uh, what is the problem. Then we will cover aspects of integration. What does it mean to integrate? Uh, what are the options? And then we'll take questions. So the first thing is the problem, what, what, what we are trying to solve, right? So we're trying to take Linux system and uh, make sure that it nicely works in the environment where Active Directory is dominant. So for most companies, Active Directory is the central hub for user identity management inside the enterprise. All systems uh, that Active Directory users can access, whether they are Linux or not, need in some way directly or indirectly access Active Directory to perform authentication and identity lookups. In some cases, Active Directory is the only allowed central authentication server during to the, policy, to the audit policies and compliance requirements. Because uh, in many cases, it is required that authentication happen just in one place and not distributed between multiple different service servers or types of servers within the enterprise. In some cases, DNS is tightly controlled by Windows side of the enterprise, and non-Windows system need to adapt to that. So the authentication uh, and identity lookups, uh, they are very, rely, they rely very much on knowing where the identity and authentication servers and services reside. So a lot of uh, communication based on DNS lookups and discovery and service discovery uh, of the services. And when Active Directory is present, it's the default predominant service provider of the authentication and identity services. So setting up DNS in the right way uh, in, in the environment or respecting uh, the DNS setup that already exists in the environment uh, and not imposing additional DNS uh, rules that have to change what already exists in the enterprise, that's very important. So when we talk about integration, what needs to be integrated, what you need to think about when you're integrating Linux system into the Active Directory environment. You need to think about authentication. So users log in into Linux systems, how they authenticate. Identity lookups, how the system knows about the right accounts. So the user logs in how the system that the user is logging in knows where to look up the accounts and where they reside. How the accounts that are stored in the Active Directory map to the Linux accounts. Because Active Directory historically doesn't have uh, native uh, Linux or POSIX attributes uh, for the user accounts. So there need to be some kind of mapping or additional attributes. So how this all happens between Active Directory, which is somewhere there and you don't control it, and your Linux system. Something needs to adapt. So or some bridges need to, be, to exist. So um, name resolution and service discovery. How the system knows where its authentication service is and how to find where to go for the identity lookups. And uh, policy management. Uh, how other identity related policies are uh, managed for the system. So it's not only authentication, it's not only identity lookup. There are a lot of things around identity that need to be present on the system for the uh, different aspects of the system to work properly and to, uh, to enforce specific access control rules and um, capabilities of SSH, of uh, pseudo and other aspects of the system. So there is a slew of different solutions, and we'll go through them, trying to, to put them uh, in some order. So the first one that I want to present is the third-party solution. 
So there are multiple different vendors on the market, uh, Quest, uh, Centrify, uh, Power Broker, that was likewise. So there are four or five different, different solutions. So conceptually, what they do is they integrate Active Directory uh, and Linux systems into Active Directory by installing the client-side components on, on Linux and other Unix systems, Mac and so on, so they do it across uh, multiple distributions. And they have some plugins into the Active Directory. So the usual, how do I use it? Okay, so the Active Directory provides three different services. So LDAP for user identity lookups, KDC for the authentication, Kerberos component, uh, DNS for the host name resolution and service discovery. So what happens on the Linux system, they install third party client, uh, it configures authentication and identity lookups to go to uh, KDC and LDAP components of the Active Directory. The name resolution is done by DNS and then the policies for the system, things like sudo, host base access control, auto mount, slinux, uh, SSH, they are managed through the central, uh, centrally installed uh, third party plugin. And different companies do it in different ways and deliver things uh, from the central server to the local machine uh, in different ways. Some do it through GPO, some do it differently through the lookups, it's all uh, depends on the vendor, implementa uh, vendor implementation. So that's the general picture for, for the third party solutions. So for the company that implements such a solution, there are diff some pros and cons. So let's see what are the pros and what are the cons. So the definite benefit of such solution is that everything managed in one place, including policies. So everything goes through one interface and people are used to manage Windows systems and Windows servers through the uh, Microsoft Management Console. So the third party plugins into Microsoft Management Console just extend the existing user experience and extend what uh, what Windows administrators are used to uh, into the Linux world, which uh, is pretty popular. popular. Uh, those companies are pretty successful for the last 10 years, so. The, there are a couple cons with those. Well, first of all, when you have uh, Linux and you have Windows, you have to bring the third party vendor to the table, and that's usually, uh, not a problem, but an obstacle. So you, the less vendors you, you deal with, especially uh, the, the more big vendors you deal, the easier it is for you as a, as a big enterprise. Extra cost per system. So those solutions, some of them has very basic solutions which are free and those are recent additions. But the full flavor solutions that allow you to centrally manage the properties of the Linux systems, they are not free. And they are pretty expensive. And as your Linux infrastructure grows inside the enterprise, the cost uh, that, of the third party vendor solution for the integration uh, starts to actually, oh, starts to become more expensive to, to integrate Linux than to maintain Linux itself. So uh, that's a problem. And um, many customers have come to Linux vendors talking about need for, for a solution in this space. So it also limits Unix Linux environment independence. As, when you have a couple of machines, definitely journeying them to the Active Directory is probably the, the right solution. But if you have thousands of the machines, they start to need uh, their own treatment. They have their own properties. Linux has traditionally have its differences from Windows. So when, <laughs> when you try to squeeze a uh, um, square peg into round hole or vice versa, right? Uh, things just don't match. And, uh, the more 
um, Linux systems you have in your enterprise, the more uh, n Linux native solution you need to, to think about. And uh, the, the drawback also is that you have to install software on the, on the Active Directory side, and uh, Windows administrators do not like that. So, next solution. So historically, as an alternative to the third-party solution, which comes with every single Linux or Unix environment, was the solution based on uh, NSS LDAP or PAM LDAP, PAM Curve 5. So those, those solutions are pretty simple. They allow to hook the machine into the Active Directory for the authentication and identity lookup purposes. There is no centralized policy management, uh, so you deal with the policies uh, in some separate way through the scripts or through uh, some kind of the configuration engine software, or Puppet, CF Engine, whatever you use, or just your scripts. There are some ways to extend uh, Active Directory and put some custom schema there for the auto mount or sudo, you can use that. But generally, it's all build up your solution having a bunch of low-level tools. And even though those tools need to be configured, uh, LDAP connection needs to be configured independently from Kerberos. And if you want really secure Kerberos connection, you have to jump through the hoops because it's not easy to configure. And there are no like good uh, tools that would help you to provision the key, uh, to to set up the uh, connection in a secure way. Let me put it this way. So, what are the pros and cons? Well, there are definitely some pros. Well, first of all, it's free. It's a part of the platform, so you just get what what you have. It, there is no third-party vendor, so it's not a problem. It's also intuitive because that's well. Everybody learns it from the very beginning. It's there. It's across all the platforms in this or that shape or form. And uh, it's a common denominator. So that's a benefit. But there are some cons. So first of all, if you want to integrate with the Active Directory, you need to have some kind of the extensions installed into Active Directory to hold POSIX attributes because there is no way those components can figure out how to map a user account from Active Directory into the local uh, attributes that are needed for the Linux system. I mean POSIX attributes, UID, GID, things like that. So you need to install uh, services for Unix or identity management for Unix. It's additional schema on the Active Directory and fill it and maintain it, so that's a pain. Policies are not centrally managed, and it's hard to configure securely. So for many years, uh, there have been an alternative to that, um, well-known, Samba. Samba, WinBind, Project, well, Samba is many things under a big umbrella, but one of the components of Samba is called WinBind. Uh, that's the client piece that allows you to integrate Linux Unix systems into the Active Directory environment. So traditionally, it was the answer for Active Directory integration for Linux Unix. It's, uh, it integrates in terms of authentication and identities. It joins the machine into the Active Directory domain so that the central uh, server treats and sees it as yet another Windows system, and it doesn't have a clue that it is actually a, uh, a Linux machine. So uh, it's free, but uh, the policies are out of scope again, so everything on the authentication and identity side is done uh, very well. It supports multiple different uh, uh, Domains, if you have multiple Active Directory domains and all the complexity uh, related to that and force and uh, definitely very, very advanced in this area, but very Active Directory focused. And one of the advantages is that it can take the uh, 
user accounts as they are in the Active Directory and on the fly translate uh, the um, properties of the Windows, uh, of the account stored in the Active Directory into the properties that are required for the Linux account. The, the synthesizes POSIX attributes on the fly. So what are the pros and what are the cons of this solution? So it's definitely one of the pros is it's well known. It doesn't require a third party. It doesn't require to install anything on the Active Directory. You don't need to put extensions. You can use the automatic remapping. And it supports trusted domains and forests and all that. There are some cons. Uh, it can connect only to Active Directory and very Microsoft focused. So it's, it's focused as a project, as a part of the bigger uh, Samba project is to pro provide the same experience as Active Directory and Microsoft. So it's a little bit tilted towards let's duplicate what we have in uh, Windows on the Linux side. Uh, it has some perceived stability issues. I don't want to discuss them, but uh, it's, it's a huge code base and it's pretty monolithic. It's hard to um, decompose it into the layers, components, libraries, and, and re reuse them in, in other situations. And in some cases, the community is not easy to deal with. Okay, the contemporary integration option. Uh, last uh, several years, we have been heavily investing into the component called SSSD, and uh, it pretty much does, uh, brings the, uh, the integration of the Linux systems into the central authentication servers or services to the next level. It provides, uh, multiple pluggable authentication and, well, m multiple, um, multiple ways how you can integrate a Linux system into the central authentication server, not only Active Directory, but other solutions, including uh, different directory servers, MIT Kerberos, and so on. So its goal was to uh, act as a gateway into the uh, central servers. And definitely there is some overlap with Samba, but the goals were and are different. And, 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 and focus is a little bit different. So at some point, uh, SSSD um, became, uh, well, it, 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 it is currently integrated in many different distributions. It's a part of Fedora, it's a part of Red Hat Enterprise Linux, it's a part of, uh, other downstream operating systems, it's a part of uh, Debian and uh, Ubuntu, uh, some earlier versions. Uh, and um, SSSD um, right now uh, focuses in the same areas where other traditional solutions uh, focus, but it provides a set of additional features like uh, it can give you multiple sources of authentication and identity at the same time, so multiple domains. System can work with multiple domains. And caching. This is one of the important uh, capabilities. The identity and if you want authentication information can be cached locally so that uh, the applications that are running on the Linux system can continue uh, working without any interrupts if the connection to the central server is broken. There are other uh, very important features, but those are the, the, the core ones. That's why we started building SSSD, and we tried to uh, not overstep into the Active Directory environment because definitely uh, WinBind is a traditional solution in this space. But what we found out is that uh, the community and some of the customers of the uh, Linux distributions say, no, 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 we like your implementation of Kerberos and LDAP. We want you to actually, and we configured uh, what you have 
to work with our Active Directory, and it works pretty well. But it doesn't recognize Active Directory as Active Directory with all its specifics. So we want you to step into this area and add additional functionality to uh, recognize Active Directory as Active Directory and take advantage of some of its capabilities. So it was kind of step into the WinBind area. So uh, we decided to go there, uh, but uh, SSSD doesn't try to replace WinBind, well, rewrite WinBind uh, functionality. It rather tries to consume it as a part of underlying libraries. So we are working with the uh, Samba community to make it easier to consume Samba components as uh, pluggable interfaces and bring them into SSSD. So what are the pros and cons of that solution? It doesn't require a third party, and in version SSSD 1.9 that was released late uh, last year, we don't rely on the uh, POSIX attributes in the Active Directory because we added a specific Active Directory focused uh, provider that now understands the, uh, the Windows accounts and can translate the uh, Windows identifier of the account into POSIX attributes on the system. Uh, so it, one of the benefits is that SSSD is the same component that you use for other solutions. So you can configure SSSD with Active Directory, you can configure SSSD with 3APA, you can co configure SSSD with LDAP, with Kerberos, with anything. It's one, one component, and uh, it's, uh, it's a, it serves the purpose of being a gateway into the central uh, authentication services. So that's what it is. And uh, so that's how it supports heterogeneous environments, and that's important because you can uh, have identities and authentication coming from Linux side, uh, from LDAP and Kerberos, at the same time, Active Directory. You can stand up, for example, two parallel uh, sources and the Linux system will understand that. Uh, there are some cons. Uh, it doesn't support transitive trusts yet. Uh, this is something that WinBind does support and we want to bring it in uh, using some of the WinBind uh, libraries and some libraries. And uh, it doesn't support some of the Active Directory uh, optimizations related to Active Directory. So we will be w working on additional features and we are working on the additional features for Fedora 19 uh, to uh, recognize more special controls and special capabilities of Active Directory in this area. So uh, next slide just compares things, and you definitely see that WinBind in some areas is more superior, uh, and the only, uh, the only thing that sticks out for uh, SSSD at, in the terms of Active Directory integration is that it provides a, a capability for a heterogeneous environments. But this is huge and this is important because you want to have transparent user, ex you want to have a transparent user experience whether you join the system into the Active Directory or into some other source. So having a unified component on the client is important going forward. So the current plan is to evolve SSSD and get it in full feature parity with WinBind and bypass it in some areas. Uh, we don't want to reinvent the wheel. We want to consume the existing functionality. So we are working, as I said, with some community on that. And uh, another component that has been added recently uh, is called Realm-D. It sits on top uh, and configures SSSD. It's a very simple uh, tool that allows detecting what environment, what authentication and identity management environment the system is in and automatically joining the system in whatever environment is available. Yes? Uh, so there's a follow-up talk about that and polishing the experience at two o'clock. Yes, thank you. Uh, so uh, 
But we have been talking about the direct integration options, and there are generally some limitations with all those approaches that we have been talking about uh, in the previous slides. First of all, mo in most cases, the policy management is left out. So the, there is identity and authentication capabilities they are taken care of, but the policies is something like so, something you manage separately. Until, or unless you buy the third party solution which does that. Uh, the cost. Even if you don't have a third party solution which adds its own entitlements and costs on top of every single Linux system, you also have Microsoft CALs which are the licenses for every single client. So Active Directory is licensed on number of clients that are connected to it. That means that if you take a Linux system and join to, to the uh, Microsoft environment, you pay the price for every single Linux system that you, that you join, which is unfortunate. Uh, and another thing is that the control is in the hands of the Windows administrators. And in many cases, Windows administrators uh, are a little bit territorial and uh, prevent the growth and independence of the Linux infrastructure. Uh, and sometimes it gets very political. So uh, to empower the Linux uh, administrators and to let the Linux uh, share of the enterprise to grow freely, we introduced a, another solution, which is a free IPA based solution. So free IPA, as you might know, is um, identity and authentication server for Linux Unix environments that takes uh, all the special needs of Linux system to its heart and provides not only authentication and, uh, and identity lookups, but also the central management of policies related to those identities. So it can also be used and viewed as a gateway into the Active Directory infrastructure. So how it can work? If you join a system through the SSSD into the free IPA, uh, then free IPA will provide uh, the name resolution, authentication, and identity lookups for the Linux system. It will also manage the policies and things like sudo, host-based access control, auto mount, slinux mapping, SSH keys. Uh, what else? Any, uh, the net groups, for example. So many different things. Um, and we continue. We will continue adding to that list. So uh, the Active Directory um, is used for syncing the accounts from Active Directory to IPA. So uh, all the accounts just copy it effectively, and then passwords are reset. So that's the solution that is fully supported. It exists in IPA but it definitely has some limitations. So let's talk about the pros and cons of that. So one of the pros is no calls, so no third party, no extra costs. Free IPA is a part of the operating system. It comes for free with the Linux distribution. Uh, policies are centrally managed. That's a big win uh, for, for Linux uh, client systems because everything is under one hood in a way that the Linux systems are used to uh, consume and understand these policies. It gives control to Linux administrators, it empowers it, which is, again, very important. And it allows the independent growth of the Linux environment. There are problems. Uh, it requires user and password sync. And uh, if you have ever set up the synchronization of something with something, you know that synchronization usually has a lot of corner cases that uh, tend to create some nasty failures and hard to, hard to track and debug and fix uh, problems. 
Um, authentication doesn't happen in Active Directory. That's probably the biggest. While, while you can deal with the synchronization and you can reset the passwords once and force the users to change the passwords and set it, uh, which is not convenient, but it can be done, if that, uh, in some cases, if the authentication doesn't happen in Active Directory and the whole audit infrastructure, and it is not only the software, but the legal pieces and audit related to third party audit process, if it doesn't happen inside Active Directory, it's a non-starter. So uh, it might be a non-starter and we have seen some uh, enterprises where this is a problem. Uh, and uh, the DNS, the proper DNS set setup is very important when you have two servers uh, providing the similar authentication and identity services, uh, setting up DNS so that the client uh, properly resolves where it should go for its Kerberos authentication or ADAPT lookups is extremely important. And misconfiguring DNS can lead to uh, nasty errors because Linux uh, client would try to authenticate against Active Directory and Active Directory won't, won't be able to authenticate it. So, there are some alternative ways of dealing with these problems. So, there can be a so-called split brain solution, which we don't recommend, but some of the uh, enterprises followed that pattern and decided to go with it. So, in comparison to the previous one, it solves the problem of central audit. So the accounts are synchronized, but the client systems are configured to still authenticate against Active Directory. So everything happens uh, in FreeIPA, and FreeIPA controls the system, but the authentication loops back to the Active Directory. So the problem with that is, it, it's, a, it's a nice solution. The problem is that you can't detect it. It's very hard to detect whether you actually go to IPA or, or go to Active Directory. So when the upgrade comes, these can be broken by the SSSD and IPA client upgrade. So uh, we don't recommend this solution unless the enterprise acknowledges that the configuration might be overwritten and would restore it after the update. So pros and cons, uh, I, I, I talked to that slide. So. Um, one of the, uh, so another solution is uh, also free IPA based, but if you don't want to deal with the DNS and set up your, your DNS inside uh, free IPA and use the integrated DNS, you can make all the clients to get its DNS information from the Active Directory DNS, which means that uh, you, effectively moving the burden on uh, to, to manually configure every, every single system uh, for the preferred servers, or you have to configure a lot of DNS information inside the AD DNS itself, which puts additional burden on the Active Directory administrators, which they don't like. So it's a possible solution in uh, SSSD, 1.9 and IPA uh, 3.0 that are now available in Fedora and Red Hat Enterprise Linux 6.4, uh, we made that configuration easier because uh, people were asking for it. But again, it's more labor intensive than using a DNS provided by free IPA. So I talked to that. So another, uh, option which we have been working on for several years is based on the free IPA trusts. So uh, in the Kerberos world, the Kerberos uh, domain controllers can establish trust to each other. And then the authentications that happened in one domain will be respected in the other domain. So we have been building this capability in free IPA we, and we think that this is really the way to go uh, in future. This is how the uh, Active Directory works in terms of multiple different uh, identity and authentication sub 
set some subdomains. They, they, do, they have four different types of trusts in the Active Directory. So we implemented uh, the cross-forest trust, so it's high, most high-level trust. Uh, but I think that, that the trust is the way to go. And it is, uh, it is integration between uh, servers on the server side, but uh, client, the SSSD in this case, also needs to understand that Active Directory is in play and Free IPA is in play. So um, what are the pros of this solution? It reduces cost. There are no CALs or third party. The policies are centrally managed. It gives control to Linux admins. It enables independent growth of the Linux environment. No synchronization required. And authentication happens in Active Directory. So all the requirements that we have identified at the beginning of this presentation are covered here. So this is the solution that hits on all the buttons. So uh, there are a couple caveats. It's, uh, it requires a proper DNS setup. And uh, the problem with that is more perception and habit because uh, Active Directory administrators are used to setting up DNS properly per domain when they're deploying multiple Windows domains. But they are not that used to dealing with the same approach on the Linux side. So effectively what we're saying here, yeah, do pretty much the same thing as you do in the Active Directory deployments. It, it's the same pattern, it's the same, it's the similar tools, it's the similar things that need to be configured. So we think that uh, our customers will be receptive to the, uh, and, and community will be receptive to the DNS requirements that Free IPA brings to the table. The biggest problem is that it requires the latest client. So probably several years from now when the clients that are capable of the CrossRAM trust uh, would be mature and everywhere, uh, this would be a predominant solution. But right now it requires people to move to the latest uh, version of the software, which is always a problem. So to summarize, while direct integration is possible and in some cases uh, required, the free IPA based integration option is pro the most cost effective and efficient and feature rich. So it's the, um, the best option that is currently available to the enterprises that are willing to move forward. And uh, it's, it's the best choice for the integration of the Linux infrastructure into the Active Directory uh, environments. Of course, we will be working on the direct integration and uh, continue, enhancing active, uh, continue enhancing SSSD for direct active uh, directory integration, but the predominant and preferred method is to use a free IPA as a gateway. And that's it. Questions? Yes. When is it available with respect to Fedora and RAW versions? It's already available in Fedora 18 and it is already available in 6.4. What, SSSD? That was the question about SSSD 1.9. Okay. So about the trust solution, I think Jenny wanted to, to comment and correct. So uh, the free APA trust solution is available upstream and it is in tech preview in RHEL 6.4. Uh, and the reason is that it's still a, a bit complex to set up, so we are not ready to uh, expose it to a uh, broad uh, set of the customers. It still needs some hand-holding. That's why we want to uh, work through several POCs with the selected customers to find ways to develop better tools and scripts and interfaces, UI, to uh, deploy the trust solution easier and faster. Any other questions? Thank you.